Well, Times Higher Education magazine is uh, based in London, uh, but we have hundreds of thousands of uh, readers all around the world on the internet. Uh, we've been publishing uh, news and analysis about higher education for 40 years now, and we were originally part of the Times of London. So we're basically specialists in higher education news from all around the world, and we have a, a, glowing, glo a growing global audience. Yes, uh, Thomson Reuters, as I'm sure you're aware, is a very large company. And our uh, broader company objective is to collect uh, information that help professionals make decisions. And so uh, by working with Times Higher Education, we believe that we can um, collect factual data about universities, which we can then turn into very useful services for universities themselves, government and funding bodies. Well, we've seen uh, extraordinary globalisation among universities in recent years. We have 3.3 million students now study outside their home countries. Uh, there's almost 50% of all research papers in the UK are co-authored with people from other countries. Um, universities are becoming global brands. They have campuses all around the world. So we're seeing tremendous globalisation in higher education. And I think there's a real need to understand that process. And rankings really help the world to, to see what's changing and reputations are growing from emerging countries like Korea, um, reputations in other countries are stagnating and the performances are changing as Korea and China and lots of Asian countries invest heavily in, in universities. In Britain and in America there's a reduction of public funding so the world's changing and rankings can really help understand that. But they're also becoming extremely influential. And it was essential to us that we had data that was reliable and that we had a system that was very sophisticated and comprehensive. So that's why we decided to work with Thomson Reuters to produce a new system that was a much more rigorous exercise. And Simon's been working for years gathering the data to create the information we need to produce a serious analysis. Just on the, on the methodology level, Times Higher Education looks at a whole university across all its aspects. So we look at research, we look at teaching, and we look at knowledge transfer. So in order to do that, we use a wide range of indicators. We've used 13 different indicators to look at a, a comprehensive university right across its activities. Um, but it's an extraordinarily complex process to look at research. Uh, Thomson Reuters have uh, used 25 million citations for 5 million articles. There's huge amounts of information we have on each university. But it's important to get a really broad sense of, of the, uh, the institution. So we collect data in, in three broad areas. One is data um, provided by the university. The second is data from our annual academic reputation survey, which incidentally we'll be launching in the next week or so for the 2011 survey. And uh, also we use the bibliometric data from the Thomson Reuters service known as the Web of Science. So those three together go in to inform uh, the ranking which is produced by the Times Higher Education. I think on, uh, on the most fundamental level, Harvard is exceptionally rich. It has a lot of money, and I think you need a lot of money to produce a lot of really good quality research. You need to pay the high salaries to attract the best academics across the world. You have the, the money to create the best facilities for scientific research, the best laboratories. So there's a really fundamental level of, of very good funding from the private individual from, from its endowments, um, which produces excellent research, which is world-renowned. But there are all sorts of other elements as well that, that contribute. You know, it has a strong academic freedom. It's, uh, it has quite a lot of autonomy to be uh, fleet of foot and to be entrepreneurial. I think the important thing to remember that uh, international rankings are based on criteria that applies all over the world. So you can use things like research impact, income measures, staff-student ratios. The local uh, rankings are based on a whole different range of criteria. Uh, one of the innovations we make with the Times Higher Education World University rankings is that we scale for size. So if you have very solid research in a specialist area that you're, you're able to perform, we don't rest too heavily on historical notions of prestige and we, we don't give as much weight to reputation as some of the other global tables do. So we're looking at um, its impact in a global environment in terms of its research output, these sorts of elements. And so you'll find that uh, smaller institutions like Postec have a very high impact in their fields. We've seen in the rankings that actually Korean science and technology universities are doing exceptionally well. Postec has a, a very high score. 
Christ has a very high score. So there's clearly excellence in science and technology. But we need to sort of unpick the data more to look at excellence in very specific mm. subject areas. I mean, I tend to say that, you know, universities should keep as broad an investment as possible across a range of research activities. Um, but clearly there's, a, there's a, an excellence in science and technology that's, that's, that's known around the world. I think I'd just add one point to that. Is, uh, there's a very good um, uh, relationship between uh, university and industry. And this is shown in the ranking by the uh, amount of funding that the uh, universities get from industry, which is very high uh, by international standards. So I think that's a real strength. I think the area that they can do uh, more um, is uh, international collaborations. Uh, by working more with internationally, um, it uh, makes the university more diverse in, in turn. In the long run, it improves the, the performance.